NASA keeps trying to launch its Artemis rocket, which will be the most powerful rocket ever launched when it does so. But every time they've tried so far, they've had to scrub the launch. From a hurricane to a faulty thermometer, the reasons for the cancellations have been pretty varied. So let's take a look at the range of things that have ruined launches and left us waiting to see Artemis lift off. The Artemis rocket system will eventually take humans back to the moon in 2025 on a mission called Artemis 3. But before that, we have to successfully launch Artemis's 1 and 2. Artemis 1 is uncrewed, and when we finally get a launch that goes ahead, we'll go around the moon once or twice before heading back to splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. It will also be the first actual launch of NASA's new SLS rocket system. SLS stands for Space Launch System. My guess is that whoever was in charge of naming that left it to the last minute. But it will be the most powerful rocket ever launched. While circling the moon, the orbiter will release 10 tiny satellites called CubeSats to do various experiments. I plan to talk about these in more detail in an upcoming video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that coming out soon. The part of the rocket that will do the orbiting of the moon is called the Orion module, and this will eventually be the module that carries astronauts back to the moon in the future. Actually, I said that Artemis 1 is uncrewed, but there will be a few passengers on board to make sure things go smoothly. One of those jobs falls to Snoopy, who will act as a zero gravity indicator when he starts floating around. Sean the Sheep will be there to represent the European Space Agency, and there will also be two mannequin torsos wearing radiation detectors as part of an experiment on the dangers of spaceflight. As well as the torsos, there will also be three full moonikins on board Orion 2, wearing sensors to provide data on the forces that the crew may experience en route to the moon in the future. Moonikins isn't just me being cute by the way, that's really what they're called. And the lead Moonikin even has a name, Captain Moonikin Campos. I would follow them anywhere. After Artemis 1, we'll have an Artemis 2 launch in 2024 with crew on board. It will do a lunar flyby, but it won't land on the moon yet. For that, we have to wait for 2025 and Artemis 3, which will be the first lunar landing mission since Apollo 17 in 1972 and that will be well over 50 years ago by the time Artemis 3 actually launches. In this video though, I want to talk about the plethora of reasons that Artemis 1 has been delayed so far in 2022. The original schedule for launch meant that liftoff should have been on August 29th, but I'm recording this video in November 2022, and it's still firmly on the ground. The rocket was originally stacked up and ready to go in October 2021, but August 2022 was the first proper attempt. The boosters were scheduled to be filled with 2.76 million litres of liquid hydrogen and oxygen to fuel the launch, starting just after midnight on August 29th. Stormy weather delayed the beginning of this fueling by about an hour, but that ended up being the least of the problems for this launch attempt. There was a crack noticed on one of the boosters and the connectors, but luckily it was just on the foam coating and not the tank itself. So this wasn't enough of a problem on its own to cancel the launch. There was also a small leak from one of the fuel tanks, but again, it was judged to be pretty small and not bad enough to cancel. The big issue for this attempt ended up being that one of the tanks, number three of four, looked like it wasn't cold enough as they were about to fill it with fuel. The fuel for the rocket that's burned during liftoff is liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen which need to be very cold to even make them a liquid. Because of this, they need to pre-chill the tanks before they load the fuel, in order to avoid damage or temperature shocks in the tank. They do this by doing something called a bleed, where they let a very small amount of the fuel through the system to cool it down. However, tank three was consistently above the maximum temperature for fueling, and after a lot of trying, they couldn't cool it down enough. That maximum temperature, by the way, is minus 420 Fahrenheit, so it's incredibly cold. Eventually, the launch window closed and they had to reschedule the launch. Somewhat frustratingly, it turned out afterwards that the temperature in the tank was actually fine, but the sensor reading the temperature was faulty and was reading an erroneously high number. In all of this, we also learned that NASA uses the Rankine scale for measuring temperatures, which I hadn't even heard of before this. It's basically like the Kelvin scale, so zero Rankine equals zero Kelvin equals absolute zero. But while a temperature difference of one Kelvin is the same as one Celsius, one Rankine difference is the same as one Fahrenheit. Rankine is basically Kelvin, but with Fahrenheit. 
Insane, but that's what they use apparently. The maximum temperature they were struggling with then, minus 420 Fahrenheit, is now 40 ranking in this system. This all sounds like quite a few problems to have on your launch attempt. But remember that the rocket is expensive and they really want this to go well. So all these decisions are made with an abundance of caution. The system needs to work and work safely so that next time it can launch with astronauts on board. So they don't want to try if there's any avoidable chance that it could fail. They really don't want it to blow up. It's also worth noting that loads of the Apollo missions also had tons of similar issues. For example, in January 1972, NASA announced a one month delay to Apollo 16. And then further delays happened for this launch when the command module fuel tank was damaged during a test and they had to replace it. That max acceleration? No. Man, you are really bouncing. Call out a Grand Prix. Okay. For Artemis 1, attempt 2 was on September 3rd. Once again, fueling seemed to be going well until our old nemesis, a hydrogen leak, reared its ugly head. Hydrogen is pretty explosive, hence why it's used as a fuel in the first place. But that means having a leak of it can be very bad. There was a leak on an 8 inch hydrogen line leading to the rocket, so fueling had to be stopped when the tank was just 8% full. Liquid hydrogen is a difficult fuel to use, but it's so efficient energy density wise that it's worth all this struggle. Again, they tried a few things to fix it, like warming the line up a bit, repressurizing the seal and turning it off and on again. But sadly, the problem couldn't be solved before the two hour launch window closed. Time for another reschedule. The next date to try was September 27th, almost a month after the original target. Usually while they wait for the next launch attempt, the rocket just sits on the launch pad waiting. However, this time Tropical Storm Ian had other plans. This was quickly developing into a full blown hurricane and was heading straight for Cape Canaveral in Florida, where these launches are taking place. NASA then had two options, leave the rocket out in the hurricane, risk damage, but maybe be ready for launch later in September, or roll the rocket back safely to the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building. Eventually, they decided on the latter meaning the rocket would be safe, but moving it to the building and then rolling it back out is really slow because the rocket is pretty big. So there was no way they were going to launch in September now. Also, even though the VAB saved it from the storm, it wasn't completely seamless. At around midnight on September 27th, there was a small fire inside the VAB. No one was hurt and the rocket was fine, but it's just a reminder that every action you do with a rocket, even if it's objectively the best thing to do, can be pretty difficult and risky. So after all of this, where are we now? The next launch window is November 14th, 2022, with further opportunities on November 16th and 19th. The rocket has been rolled back out onto the launch pad after some minor maintenance that included repairing damaged foam and cork on the thermal protection system and replacing and recharging batteries on the rocket and CubeSats on board. Will this launch finally be the one? Do you have any questions or comments about any of this? Let me know down below if you do. And also let me know if you're excited for humanity to finally be heading back to the moon. I'll bring you updates on the channel and keep you up to date on all of the exciting developments with the Artemis program and more. So be sure to subscribe if you're new and check out some other spacey videos on the channel too while you're at it. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.